Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. What do you say? Let's take a look at what's trending this week right here on Takedown. Well, to say it's been a disappointing summer for American wrestlers might be an understatement, but cheer up. Help is on the way. The Cadet Freestyle Squad has the hardware to prove it. Let's start with Virginia's Kurt McHenry. He opened the tournament with a decision and two tech falls and advanced to the finals to face Mihir Mamazada of Azerbaijan. Trailing 4-4 late in the bout, McHenry scored from neutral, becoming the first U.S. Cadet gold medalist of 2016. I looked at my the people I had and I was like, okay, well, you came to the World Championships to win worlds. You came to be the best in the world, so you got to beat the best. And to be the best, you got to beat the best. And I really didn't care who I had to wrestle. I just wrestled the body. I didn't wrestle his name. I didn't wrestle his country. I went out there and put it on him. I didn't really care where they're from, what their name was, what they'd done, if they placed the Euros, if they won their internationals or whatever. I didn't care. I just went out there and tried to win. I look at it like it's my job. It's like, I gotta be a professional. I gotta take it serious. So that's what I try and do. I didn't come out here and waste the whole summer of wrestling the whole time. I know a lot of people don't want to wrestle all summer. They want to be on the beach. And so I wasn't trying to make put that summer to waste and waste my parents' time and my coaches and all that stuff. So I was just focused. I didn't want to come out here and play any games. I wanted to get the job done. New York native Vito Arruja outscored his first three opponents 29 to six and then moved into the 58 kilo finale that's where he'd face Amir Hussein Mosadi of Iran. The two traded shots from start to finish, but Mosadi took the 12-8 decision and Arugia walked away with the silver. I really came into this tournament not really knowing what to expect, never having really any actual overseas experience before. So coming here and like testing the waters was really, you know, enlightening for me in some ways. I could really focus on now what I need to learn on and, um, what I'm good at, so. What do you think was was different from the international perspective? It's, it's not, nothing really that different. It's just, it's something unknown to like people from the US. So we feel like the sense of like danger, like, oh, there's some foreign people coming out here. It's like, we need to like prepare ourselves, but they're just regular wrestlers, you know? They don't have any magic technique. It's all the same, same wrestling, you know? So now you, you know, with your dad having so much international uh, success and, you know, you working with Yanni so much, did they try and give you a little bit of a background of what it was going to be like coming here to prepare you a little bit better? Yeah, I mean, people can always tell you what it's going to be like, but until you have that, that first-hand experience, you never really know what, you know, you can read a book about something, right, but you can't, you know, it, it, it's, it's something different, it's, it's special to yourself that when you come here and you, you participate in these tournaments. After falling on criteria in the semifinals, David Carr and Jacob Warner returned to the mat and tacked on two bronze medals for Team USA. Carr cruised to a 7-2 victory over Gegum Galstan of Armenia, while Warner picked up an 11-point shutout over Jacob Zamula of Poland. You know, I, I didn't want to leave here without a medal, and uh, I fell short of the gold, but, you know, Jesus Christ helped me get through that bronze medal match, and uh, it was awesome. What was it like bouncing back after losing and knowing that you weren't going for gold anymore? You know, how was your mindset, and you know, how did you kind of change things to make sure you came out of here with a win? Um, I was really hard on myself because of the way I lost, and uh, my brother called me, had a lot of support by a lot of people, and it really helped me get through the match. I mean, going through that match a little bit, you know, your double was really working well in that one. Got a couple of nice takedowns. Really working well all day. You know, talk about your offensive mentality. You were real aggressive today. I'm um, just getting the offense off. These guys wrestle a lot different from the guys I wrestled before. So just getting that confidence and trying to blow through them. Coming into it, I I had no stress on me. Bronze medal. It's important, but I wanted to get it. But that wasn't the end all be all. That's not what I wanted to begin with. I didn't come here to get a bronze medal, so there was no stress on it. Really? Can you talk about, you know, what how you grew, I guess, from this experience? I mean, it takes a lot of character to come back after a loss, especially the type of loss I had, 4-4, loss on criteria. I mean, basically just staying wrestling that second period, and it cost me a potential gold medal. And coming back, I, mean, I was pretty heartbroken, but with the help of my coaches, I was able to get my mind right again and realize that I need to come back for bronze, not only for myself, but for the team to win the team title. We'll have more from the Cadet World Championships after this short time out. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Casey.
Right now, get any large original or flatbread Supreme pizza for only $13.99. Casey's, famous for pizza. At Cookies, sauces and seasonings are business, but food is our passion. Our secret ingredient is Cookies Flavor Enhancer and All-Purpose Seasoning. It makes pretty much everything taste better. You can use it on meats and in marinades, veggies and seafood. Try it on pasta and even popcorn. Pick up a bottle at your local grocer and enhance the flavor of your favorite foods. Cookies For more ideas and recipes, visit CookiesBBQ.com. Cookies is the one. for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defense so defend what you have built. All right, welcome back. Our coverage of the Cadet World Championships continue with the final day of action from Tbilisi. Defending world champs Yanni Dikmahalis and Gable Stevenson became the first Americans ever to win two Cadet World titles, doing so on Sunday. And Travis Whitlake gave the U.S. its seventh freestyle medal of the tournament. Dikmahalis dismantled the 63-kilo field, outscoring his opponents 52-6, to with three of his five wins coming by Tech. In the gold medal round, Dick Mahala shut out Moldova's two-time European medalist, Stefan Tonu, 8-0. It's probably the best match I wrestled all day. So, like, it's good that I won, but it's good that I finished off, like, wrestling well, competing, you know. What was working well for you in that match? I got my fakes going. I got him moving. I got him uncomfortable. Like, usually I'm not physical. I was physical enough for I got worn for it, which is good. It shows that, like, I'm getting better at what I'm trying to get better at. So... I was able to get to attacks and run through attacks instead of stopping at my knees. Overall, like, I was com completely wrestling from setup to finish. It was good. So how would you compare last year's title to this year's title? Well, last year I was like, you know, fingers crossed to see how it goes. This year I was like, I'm a turning world champ. And like, these guys were coming to get me. Like, you know, USA is good. And I had success the year before, so I wanted to like do this for me. So winning this one, winning your second one, what does that do for you from a mental standpoint, from a confidence standpoint, from a, like when you go back home? What does that mean? It shows me I'm ready for the junior level. It shows me maybe I'm ready to start wrestling senior level guys. I'll take my losses here and there, but I think this World Championships shows me that I'm ready to, I'm ready to be finished with cadets. I'm ready to move on. And I'm prepared for the next level. Minnesota's Gable Stevenson opened up with shout-out victories over Ashat Rishanyan of Armenia and Samid Kurban of Turkey, and then made it back to the gold medal round with a 5-1 victory against India. After giving up a push-out early in the 100-kilo finals, Stevenson scored on a takedown, a step-out, and a turn to defeat his Russian rival, 5-1. I'm working every day, all summer for this, no breaks, and told y'all back in June I was going to win it, and... I still, I stuck with my word and just, I won it like five minutes ago and it feels good. Talk about the match, man. I mean, physical match, back and forth. He took you off the stage right at the first. I said, don't, don't poke the lion there. Man. Yeah, when he took me off the stage, that was kind of like a turn up moment for me. It was like, he's ready to brawl, so I came out swinging right back. We had some physical moments, but I that, still. Is that the match you wanted? Yeah. Last year, I kind of knew what to expect, a bunch of tough guys that I'd never seen before. And this year, it's kind of the same. I found a video on these guys. And so I just kind of went on my instinct of what I do best. And I perfected it, and I won. So how's, how's the second one feel? Feel as good as the first, or feel better? I feel better, man. No one else has done this. It's just me and Yanni. 
Well, he was pinned in the second round, but Travis Whitlick reeled off three straight victories in the repechage rounds and took home the bronze at 76. Facing Japan's Shitaro Yamada, the American ran out to an early four-point lead. Yamada would eventually tie the score, but gave up a point on a failed challenge, giving Whitlick the 5-4 victory. Coming back was after I beat a guy from Azerbaijan, and, and I knew I had a chance for a bronze medal. It, was, it made all the difference in the world, you know, brought my spirits back up. And uh, even after my first match, after, my, after I lost, the next first match was... I mean, after I, I felt good in that match, I started moving my feet a little bit better, um, you know, and so I was picking up the pace and I was feeling good, so, I mean, coming back was, was actually a good thing for me. Despite a seven medal performance by the Americans, Russia would claim the team title with 69 points. Team USA followed just two points back, and Azerbaijan and Georgia tied for third with 47. Cadet national coach Brandon Slay. We didn't score as many points today as we really wanted to and needed to to win the team title. Um, but the last time I checked, there's you know there's only one planet that has people living on it, and this group got second on that planet as a group of young men, 15 to 17 year olds, and I'm really really proud of their overall effort as a team. You know, another thing that that I'm really proud of is that you know Russia um, they had two champions, we had three champions. So yeah, they beat us overall as a team, um, but we had more gold medals you know than they did, and so that's something that. As Team USA, as we leave here, we can be, um, you know, we can be proud of and excited. Our, our, our big term this whole entire summer was full effort. That if you give full effort for four minutes, then the winning is going to take care of itself. You know, the, the, these gold medals and, and these team titles. The plan was these team medals. They're going to take care of themselves. And I think, uh, for the most part, our, our team did that, and, and that's why we won seven out of the ten medals. Um, and. And, and though, yeah, we, we didn't come home with the team top, but I'll tell you, to have 10 weight classes and to bring home seven medals out of the 10 weight classes is a really, uh, it's a special accomplishment. And, and it's special because you got to remember, these guys really only wrestle freestyle about four months of the year, right? They're involved in folk style, you know, the rest of the time. I mean, they start folk style approximately right around September and they go all the way to March. And they wrestle freestyle basically April through, you know, very beginning of September. So the rest of the time, anyways, they're, they're wrestling a different style. It's different rules where you don't have to defend a gut wrench. And if you get feet to back, it's only two, right? And you can step out of bounds. So for them to, to wrestle freestyle for just the summertime, right, and to be able to come in here and get second in the world against teams that that's all they've done is wrestle freestyle since they were six years old, I think is, is really impressive that our guys are able to, to make that transition and do as well as they do. And, and really, a couple of things go opposite way. A couple of these little weight classes, um, you know, we could have been the best team in the world. But, you know, if some butts are candy nuts, we'd all be cracking and eating them. You know, we came up a little short, but still, something really special to be said for this team. Kyle Snyder's back at Ohio State. We'll catch up with America's youngest Olympic gold medals right after this. You're watching Takedown, thanks to McBride Mack. crust, fresh meats and vegetables, 100% real mozzarella. There ain't nothing like the smell of a homemade pizza when it comes out of the oven. Of course, those pine tree air fresheners smell pretty darn good too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Introducing your favorite dip on a pizza. Pick up the all new spinach artichoke chicken pizza today. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green but cost-effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com.
One word is used to describe Kyle Snyder, historic. After bagging a Big Ten, a national and world title, Snyder crushed the competition in Brazil and became the youngest U.S. wrestler to ever win Olympic gold. Now back on the campus of Ohio State, Snyder sat down with the Buckeye Athletic Department and talked about his journey to become the best in the world. I think I gained a lot of experience just uh, wrestling more international uh, tournaments. You know, I wrestled a lot of international matches in between that year and the uh, 2015 World Championships. Wrestled over 30 matches in college where I got to learn and grow. So I don't know if there's one thing in particular I could say I learned from that match other than probably, you know, not, not worrying as much about my opponent and uh, not trying to game plan as much, kind of just going out there and wrestling as hard as I can to be the best that I can be. It was exciting being announced. They announced it during halftime that I was going to be wrestling at heavyweight and the duel actually came down to my match. So it was really exciting. First heavyweight match I've ever competed in. I was excited to wrestle in front of the Buckeye crowd. Excited to just compete because I hadn't in a while. And uh, you know, those are the type of situations that I like to be in where the team is dependent on me to uh, get a victory. There was no hesitation or worry about moving up to heavyweight. I felt like I was strong enough. I had good enough technique to where even the bigger guys I wouldn't have that much of a problem with. Yeah, I was looking forward to wrestling Gwiz. I was, you know, excited for the opportunity. Um, it was a big match. Those are the matches that I like where people get excited and uh, hyped up about and it lived up to the you know the glory that people wanted it to be it's pretty exciting lots of scoring for a heavyweight match a lot of people say it's one of the best ones ever so that's that's how wrestling should be done yeah it's a great opportunity you know we live together here um, at the apartment so it's awesome being able to live with him and uh, drill and work out with him and one of my best friends so it's uh, great to share a college experience with them. I mean you never know what's gonna happen that's what makes the sport exciting I mean our goal is to be team champ with many individual champions on the team and we're capable of doing that as long as guys wrestle hard and uh, try and score points and make it fun so I think the goal, the goal of the team should just be be the best wrestlers they can be, score as many points as possible, have fun while they're doing it, and uh, if we do that, we have the guys to win the tournament. Individually, I see a lot of growth in the sport of wrestling. I see technically getting better, stronger, faster throughout the year, and. Uh, Accolade-wise, hopefully we'll see if I continue to have success, but I'm gonna challenge myself. The guys that I could train with here, people I could be surrounded by, had a similar mindset as me and love the sport, so it's always good to be around people, surround yourself with people who think the same way about the sport and share the same passion as you. Um, and I love my teammates, I love the coaches, uh, the campus and academic support system here is incredible. You know, our academic advisor, John Macko, is one of the best in the entire country at doing what he does. And you know, other people should come here, I guess for similar reasons that I just said, but you know, they visit and find their own reasons as well. Small, small things make big, difference, big differences, so. Well, a former Oregon wrestler is about to make his long awaited return to MMA. More on that after the break. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Nike Wrestling.
Yellow Blue wants to show you three great ways to make your home more comfortable. Install a hybrid solar home system, utilizing solar power in the day, battery power at night. Install a solar attic fan to reduce heat and moisture from your attic. And install a multi-layer reflective insulation blanket in your attic to reduce the cost of heating and cooling. Conserve energy, save money, protect the environment with Yellow Blue Ecotech. Learn more ways at yellowbluetech.com. Speed the Sauce Man here. While sauces and seasons are our business, food is our passion. And we've been helping make your favorite foods taste better for years. Try our wings and things hot sauce and everything from chicken wings to your morning eggs. Use it in recipes like spicy chicken noodle dinner, party dip, and buffalo chicken pizza. It's not only delicious, but it's award-winning too. Wings and Things recently earned first place honors in the hot sauce category at the National Barbecue Association's Award of Excellence competition. Remember, smart cookies use cookies. Proudly made in the USA, Danmar offers incredible protection and customized gear. I'm Tony Ramos, NCAA champion and world team member. Take my word that Danmar Warrior headgear is the best. It's what I use. Look for my limited edition signature headgear at a retailer near you or online at danmarwarrior.com. I'm a world-class warrior and you can be one too with Danmar. Follow me on Twitter at T underscore Ram133 or on my website teamramos.co. All right, welcome back. Long before Conor McGregor's rise to stardom in the UFC, former University of Oregon wrestler Chael Sonnen laid the foundation for success both inside and outside the octagon. Now, it's been more than three years since the sport's most colorful character last stepped inside the cage, but now the self-described bad guy is back. Sonnen just signed a multi-year contract with Bellator and says he's ready to fight anyone at any weight or what he called a gangster weight. I'm on a legend kicking tour, and I hope they put two guys because one of them's going to pull out. And I, all I can tell you is, as for myself, no matter what happens, I will make that walk when my music hits those speakers. Anybody, anytime, at any weight class, and that isn't bravado or tough guy talk, I've just had it, man. I thought my, I thought my race was ran. I wrote the book on this thing, and I can tell that there's a couple of chapters left. I, I keep watching these guys. And it's like Marshall Mathers said, they might walk like me and talk like me, dress, act, not give a dang like me, and they just might be the next best thing, but they are not quite me. And I'm watching these guys, and they're talking about money and who their opponents are and the weight class, and if this happens, who cares about all that stuff? You either want to fight or you don't. And, and one of my main motivations for coming back is pure anger. I sit back as a fan. I watch these guys squibble and squabble. It's got nothing about this. I put this deal together. Uh, with Coker over three phone calls. I didn't negotiate. I didn't ask for anything. I want an opportunity to fight. That was it. And he'll tell you the same thing. It was as simple as that. I'd like to go at light heavyweight. I, I've been uh, mentally preparing uh, to compete, and I was thinking about going into the middleweight division. I think uh, with the change of being over in Bellator, I'm just looking at the lineup. I'm looking at the guys that they have. Uh, I just, I just think 205 is the place to be for right now. That that can change overnight. I, Rory McDonald got signed, one of the best talents out there. He did an interview talking about he wants to go up to 185. He's going to need some opponents. Uh, I personally believe uh, that Fedor is on his way to Bellator. I've heard these rumblings, usually in this business where there's smoke, there's fire. I don't think he's coming to 205, so there's an opportunity at heavyweight. But I fight a gangster weight. What? Get on the scale, whatever it says, man. You either want to fight or you don't, and I do. I like to go out there and compete because it's the only sport I know. I was an amateur wrestler. I used to work so hard and two, two workouts a day and cutting weight and just doing this whole thing while trying to go through school and, uh, you know, have a, have a normal life. And we go compete, and there would be nobody there but my mom and dad and then but my teammates' mom and dad. And when I got into MMA, all of a sudden, you're doing the same thing, but your hard work, it's also feeding your ego. People are watching. People are tuning in. And, yeah, that's a part of it that Bellator's embrace. You can go look at the ratings and look at the numbers, uh, you know, that are going through the roof. Uh, as much people are, are talking about me, people are pumped about uh, Congo and Johnson, which is going down tonight, uh, which I'm going to have a hand in, by the way. So make sure you're tuning in. Live and free and only on Spike. Special thanks to Bellator MMA, USA Wrestling, and the Ohio State Athletic Department. 
Look for all the breaking wrestling news, interviews, and articles at TakedownWrestle.com. Check out Global Wrestling later this week for our continuing insight and analysis from the Cadet World Championship from Tbilisi, Georgia. Until then, I'm Scott Kess for Thanks for Watching, and we'll see you next week.